All right, so welcome back to the shop. Today, I found some pipe that was just laying around in my scrap bin, and I think I can turn it into a nice little instrument maker's plane. So, um, and then digging through, I, I already found a piece that was nice and cut off, and I think, I think this is what I'm gonna make my plane body from. I have a part of a side that ended up being scrapped, and I think I can turn this into the sole. I've got some leftover teeny tiny chunks of coca bolo. Perfect for the infills. And yeah, let's get started. So I'm starting off, I'm gonna go ahead and anneal this brass that'll help make it soft. So basically to do that, just get it red hot, let it cool off. And the advantage here of working with it in a softer state is that I can hammer on it and I can um, manipulate the shape of it and it will reduce the chances that I end up cracking it because it became overworked. So I want to put a half inch wide blade in there and this looks like it's going to be just the right size. And so now it's time to start shaping the body. So my intention here is to have the back flare out and for the front also jut forward. And I just need to make some room for that. I'm gonna go ahead and file it off to ease that transition. And I'm using the vice jaws essentially as a depth stop. So when the file hits the jaws, I know that I have gone far enough and it should be fairly even on both sides. And now I'm going to turn my attention to the front of the plane and I'm using a, a Dremel with some carbide burrs to hollow out the material and that will allow me to isolate what I want to be the front and then shape that how I see fit and this is getting small enough we're getting in there with a hacksaw this is just a little real cumbersome and so opening it up with the burrs and then going with the chainsaw file allowed me to kind of get the shape I was after and now I'm over at the anvil with a hammer and I'm flattening out that material It'll thin it out, which will make it a little bit easier for me to bend it over. And then I can also kind of shape it a little bit more. And with that shape roughed out, I've taken it over to the belt sander to refine it. And now I'm over at the disc grinder to flatten out the bottom of that pipe. It deforms somewhat with the shaping, and this will just make it easier to mate it to the sole. And for the sole, I'm using some pre-ground 3 16th inch mild steel. 
and I'm going to go ahead and open the mouth up on the drill press. So now I'm over at the little bench top mill I have. The drill press, I wasn't able to get enough holes in it like I had wanted to. They kept, the bit kept slipping on me. Um, so I'm gonna use this tool instead to open that up a little further. And I don't need to take it to final dimensions. Instead, I'm gonna uh, file it to the lines. I just need to get a bulk of the material out of there. So now it's back to the vise and I have some needle files here and I'm using that same trick I used earlier. Uh, the vise jaws themselves are my depth stop. So as soon as I hit the jaws then I know I've got gotten to the lines. And now I'm back on the Dremel and I'm using that and some carbide birds to cut in my bed angle. And this actually went pretty quickly. And so the sole itself is super glued to a block of wood. That block of wood is my uh, essentially the reference angle for, for this, for the bed. And I'm using that as my depth stop. And as you file down, as soon as the file starts touching that wood, I know I have my bed to the angle that I want it to be. And in this case, I chose, went ahead and chose 55 degrees. All right, now it's time to join the body and the sole together. And for that, I'm using some silver braise. And I went ahead and fluxed everything and then cut little tiny pieces of braise to stick in on the inside of the plane there. And once everything is hot, that braise melts and joins everything together. And now it's time to soak in vinegar overnight to help clean everything up. And so here I've actually made a mistake. I got the mouth placement wrong. The mouth should have been shifted forward to allow enough room for the, the blade to sit at the angle I intended it to. Uh, I think it was coming in at like 65 degrees instead of 55 like I wanted. So to solve that issue, basically just cut the back and bent it over. And in the end, I actually think this worked out because I got to, it led me down a kind of a different creative path than, that I th than I thought I would head down. And then it's back to some files to help kind of clean everything up and some more annealing because this is going to get worked and there's a good chance I could crack it if I uh, started hammering on it just because it got overworked. Because brass, as you work it, it work hardens, and the harder something is, the more likely it is to crack. So here I am starting a scroll, essentially. So I've hammered on it to thin out the material, and now I'm trying to scroll that over on itself. And this, for the most part, I think turned out, it turned out okay. It was a little difficult. I don't, the, my small hammer was too light to do any work. My bigger hammer was kind of too big 
Um, so I need to I need to figure out a, a, a more efficient way to make that scroll for future projects. And then now I am going ahead and I'm, I'm drilling for my cross pin. And this is what's going to hold the wedge in. And I went ahead and backed this with a, a piece of brass just to hold everything in orientation and then just drilled straight through. And that's an eighth inch pin in there. And just doing some test fitting, making sure it's all gonna work the way I want it to. And it looks like it's gonna be pretty good and it's at least good enough for me to move on to the next steps. And that next step here is to cut some Coco Bolo for the infills. And now it is the next day. I'm going to start trimming away all of the excess. And now that all of the infills are done and shaped, I can work on the rest of the body. So I'm just back over at the belt grinder and I am basically just trimming off all the excess there on the sole. And I'm just grinding it down until it meets, meets the body. And this sole is entirely too thick for this plane is 3 sixteenths of an inch. But the reason I did that was because I wanted to add in some curves on the bottom of that sole. So it's gonna curve in two directions, both front to back and side to side. And now it's time to peen over the cross pin. And I should have put some kind of spacer or something in there uh, because I actually ended up bent, bending the cross pin during the peen. So I need some support there, but you know, this is a plane for my own personal experimentation. So I wasn't too worried about it. It is what it is. And now for one of my kind of favorite finishes on metal planes is is doing a, a blackening treatment on them, some patinaing, and I just really like the way it looks. And I don't know if you could if you saw it could see it clearly there, but one of the things I did was I went through with a, a small jeweler's hammer and just tapped all the way around the plane, adding some little hammer divots, and uh, so that was done for two reasons. One was I like the look and two is that it helped to work harden that brass just give it less of a chance of it bending in some way that I don't want it to just by handling it and so now I've gone ahead and cut up uh, the rest of the coco bolo I had and I'm gonna go ahead and start forming the the wedge 
and it's just over I'm back on the mill and the cocoa bolo is hard enough and this is uh, these pieces are, are small enough that just this felt like the safest and most efficient way to shape and cut this So now it's time for testing. And we're gonna first off testing with a chamfer. And then I'm gonna go ahead and test doing the whole, uh, cleaning up the rest of that surface. And for the most part, it's, it's working pretty well. It's a little difficult to engage the cut. And I haven't quite decided if that's due to uh, the plane or some, and something I did, or if it's just the nature of it being curved. And I think it's just kind of the nature of it being curved because I have a round spoke shave that was manufactured by a big company and I kind of have the same problems. So, and so this is the finished plane. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. And this was a proof of concept that I feel was a success. So thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you on the next one.